2014. And the crews in this race, lane one, France, lane two, Netherlands, lane three, Great Britain, lane four, Poland, lane five, Italy, and lane six, Ukraine. So the crew's now just getting aligned. We can see the Italian crew there just getting the boat, looking straight down the course, getting into that shoe as we have a look at the French crew in lane one. New combination this year. Stern pair, under 23 silver medalists, just a few months ago in Poznan. Crew from the Netherlands in two. They were pretty fast in the heat. They came in second behind the strong Lithuanian crew. We'll see later. Lane three, possibly the most consistent crew in this field. And they were very fast earlier in the year in Poznan in World Cup two. In the center lane today. Crew from Poland. They got onto the podium three times already in 2017. Experienced campaigners. Italian crew in lane five. In the bow seats, there's experience. In the other seats, there's youth. And the crew from Ukraine in lane six. Again, experience in the stroke seat. Italy, Ukraine. As we see, there's loose fingers on the blades. Now we're ready to go. Felt like a long hold between the attention and the crews getting away. But they've all got very smoothly out and into their stars. And we're away here in this semi-final of the men's quadruple skulls. The British, probably one of the favorite crews for this event, would you think, Greg? Well, I think it's still a fairly open event, really. We've got to see what's happened as people have gone away and trained since they did the European Championships and the World Cup Series. See how well people have moved on in the last last eight weeks or so. Because this is another one of those events that's looking for a dominant force as we take a look here in with the crew from Ukraine in lane six, who've made that strong start. Yeah, I mean, they're stepping up a, a notch, really. Not really shown much form this season, so uh, they've got to be in contention early on. We have the poles there on the screen. Probably another one of the crews that we would traditionally be looking at to, to be taking a hold of this event. But like you say, there's really not been a crew in this event yet that has stamped their dominance on it for uh, the Tokyo Quad. So plenty of opportunity. Uh, the British, though, I think is, is certainly one of the crews uh, to be watching. Peter Lambert in the stroke seat of the boat. An experienced campaigner in the stroke seat of the quad, Peter Lambert. and. Uh, We'll, we'll see how this one goes, but I think we could be in for another really close and exciting race as it is the Dutch over there from the Netherlands in lane two. They're getting that bad ball just squeezing ahead, coming up through 500 gone. Yeah, the Dutch, uh, well, they're coached by Luca Meerhorst, who has been working with Stefan Reining, the Dutch single skull, who did so well yesterday to make the semi-finals. But uh, a little bird told me that Diedrich Simon, of course, the famous Dutch Olympic champion from 1996 in the Mente, the coaches at Nearhouse. He has been working with these guys, Freak Hobbers, the stroke man, the charismatic Dutch stroke man, and Abi Beersma, both from the Nearhouse 8, that won this season in Belgrade, beat the British, and they went into the quad, showed their versatility. There's the Dutch there, and doing a bit of work out here with the magic of Diedrich Simon. That Dutch quad look very smooth, don't they? Very relaxed in their faces. Because this boat is one where you want to be efficient, you want to be clean. And the Dutch moving out there. The British seem to be moving quite nicely, just quite quietly going with them. As you said, this crew from the Ukraine on the near side went out hard, but haven't quite been able to maintain that pace. Yeah, to me, it looks like Holland, Britain and Poland, you know, put your money on. Yeah, the British, I think, quite aggressive with their body swing in the second half of the stroke. They're really dynamic through that back end just uh, when you compare them to the Dutch who are a little smoother, who maybe don't have that punchiness in the back end of the stroke. And, and I think in the quad that this actually could help the British as they start to, you know, really head for home after the 1,000 metre mark. I think that gives you that turn of speed to really start to step up. You have to say as they come through to the 1,000 metre mark, the Dutch leading, Britain not far behind, Poland in third place, Ukraine in fourth. That uh, British sculling is on a high at the moment. They've got this fantastic quad. They've got single Tom Barris who's been setting the world like big Robbie Manson in the heat and then of course they've got the two men in the double Broom and Thomas who've really shown well here after missing the season through injury and uh, 
were talking to Gianni Postiglione this morning before we came into the venue, and he picked out the British stunning program as really one of the world's best at the moment. Well, as we've said, this is an event that's looking for someone to come in and dominate it. The British will want to be that crew. The Netherlands really going toe-to-toe -to -toe for them here. But it is this third quarter where the British are now just starting to, maybe if they've got that, that togetherness, um, that experience in the, the centre of the boat, the two men in the centre of the boat have rode in the double skull uh, together for the whole of the last Olympiad. Now just starting to exert some dominance and see if these poles can go with them, the crew from Poland here. Yeah, the two men there just uh, furthest away from you, that's uh, Darius Rados and Viktor Chabal out of the Polish quad that finished fourth in the Olympics in Rio. There was that event won by Germany. None of those men are in this competition. They've, both, they've all retired at the moment, but uh, that shows the standard of this event. And we can see the move now coming from the British. As we said before, that a little bit more aggression, I think, is really setting them up well here in this third quarter of the race as they come to the 1500 metre mark. They're now almost two thirds of a length clear of the Dutch who were leading them in the early stages of the race off to their right hand side. The poles on the left hand side. So it's happening how we thought it would. But what's really interesting is what's happening up the top of the screen there. And it looks like the French in lane one who are trying to get themselves back into this race. Well, remember, it's three to qualify, so the French need to make some kind of move now with only 350 metres left. As you say, Sarah, we're seeing the British crew here from above and seeing how they're punching those hands out. The first thing that happens at the end of the stroke is the blades come in, they come in fast. And it's almost like the faster they come in, the faster you can punch them out and get up and get ready for that next stroke as the British have now got clear water ahead of the crew from Netherlands in two and Poland in four. And the French looking to make that move. They're looking to come back. It's going to have to be a very big last 250. So they're in the red boys, coming in front of their grandstand. Here we go for the big run in. That's a great shot, isn't it? Reverse shot angle of the French, desperately trying. That's their stroke man, Maxime Ducray, just 21 years of age, took a silver medal in the life in the men's double skulls, the under 23s. Now in the big time, and they've still got about three or four meters to catch up on the poles on this side. So it's the British leading, it's the Dutch in second place, the poles hanging on to third by their fingernails from the French charge. And here come the French, they're eating away a little by little, but I don't know that there's going to be enough time to get there. The poles are just going to hang in there. Yeah, that's Britain cross the line first, Netherlands take second. As Sarah said, the poles did hang in there. Disappointment for the French, they take fourth, but a great race from them, Ukraine fifth and the young Italians will come in in sixth place. And interesting when we talk about writing a dominance ah. on it, the British haven't stopped rowing. To me, that's an interesting little psychological thing. They've crossed the line, they've immediately sculled straight away. They want the others not to see that they're hurting. They want to get themselves back, get in those ice, ice baths. I've seen athletes walking around wearing these ice jackets try and get their body temperature down because it is hot out there and we're now in the midday sun. It's very interesting, Greg. We uh, can see it from our commentary position, but you can't see it so well on the screen. The British have not stopped rowing. They're going all the way around straight to, to the warm down area while all the other crews have stopped and they're laying down. And, and there's also, um, in terms of the recovery, it's not just a psychological thing. It's really important if you can keep moving to do that because it does start to work out the lactic acid and to flush that out, which will really aid their recovery and, like you say, get to the cool uh, water of the ice baths and, and uh, get those ice vests on uh, quicker rather than sitting out in the sun and, and letting that lactic acid pool, which will take longer to clear it after the race and, and slow down that recovery effort. Well, it is all now about the uh, final for those three boats that made it across the line first. That they can think about the final started already. The, the next 48 hours are all important to them. It will define their season. What happens as we just take a look here. Lovely close-up shots of that British quad. Sarah, you said how they're aggressive in that last piece of the stroke as they draw the blades in just there. And the blades come in fast. They go out fast and they go out together very smoothly across this lovely water in these great conditions we've got here now. And I think it's even turned into a little gentle tailwind. It's just building as the day goes on. Jack Beaumont there, young bowman in the British quads. Just 23 years of age. See confirmation there, the three qualifiers from Great Britain, the Netherlands and Poland, going through to the A final, France.